This is the Word of God, a powerful, life-changing set of books including history, law, poetry, prophecy, the gospel of Jesus, and more. In only about 15 minutes per day, you can read along and see and hear what God has done. Let's read. 1 Kings chapter 10 When the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the Lord's name, she came to test him with hard questions. She came to Jerusalem with a very great caravan, with camels that bore spices, very much gold, and precious stones. And when she had come to Solomon, she talked with him about all that was in her heart. Solomon answered all her questions. There wasn't anything hidden from the king which he didn't tell her. When the queen of Sheba had seen all the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, the food of his table, the sitting of his servants, the attendance of his officials, their clothing, his cupbearers, and his ascent by which he went up to the Lord's house, there was no more spirit in her. She said to the king, It was a true report that I heard in my own land of your acts and of your wisdom. However, I didn't believe the words until I came and my eyes had seen it. Behold, not even half was told me. Your wisdom and prosperity exceed the fame which I heard. Happy are your men, happy are these your servants who stand continually before you, who hear your wisdom. Blessed is the Lord your God, who delighted in you, to set you on the throne of Israel, because the Lord loved Israel forever. Therefore he made you king, to do justice and righteousness. She gave the king one hundred twenty talents of gold, and a very great quantity of spices and precious stones. Never again was there such an abundance of spices as these which the Queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. The fleet of Hiram that brought gold from Ophir also brought in from Ophir great quantities of almond trees and precious stones. The king made of the almond trees pillars for the Lord's house and for the king's house, harps also and stringed instruments for the singers. No such almond trees came or were seen to this day. King Solomon gave to the queen of Sheba all her desire, whatever she asked, in addition to that which Solomon gave her of his royal bounty. So she turned and went to her own land, she and her servants. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was 666 talents of gold, in addition to that which the traders brought, and the traffic of the merchants, and of all the kings of the mixed people, and of the governors of the country. King Solomon made two hundred bucklers of beaten gold, six hundred shekels of gold went to one buckler. He made three hundred shields of beaten gold, three minas of gold went to one shield, and the king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. Moreover, the king made a great throne of ivory, and overlaid it with the finest gold. There were six steps to the throne, and the top of the throne was round behind, and there were armrests on either side by the place of the seat, and two lions standing beside the armrests. Twelve lions stood there on the one side, and on the other on the six steps. Nothing like it was made in any kingdom. All King Solomon's drinking vessels were of gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of pure gold. None were of silver, because it was considered of little value in the days of Solomon. For the king had a fleet of ships of Tarshish at sea with Hiram's fleet, once every three years the fleet of Tarshish came bringing gold, silver, ivory, apes, and peacocks. So King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth in riches and in wisdom. All the earth sought the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put in his heart. Year after year, every man brought his tribute, vessels of silver, vessels of gold, clothing, armor, spices, horses, and mules. Solomon gathered together chariots and horsemen. He had 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horsemen. He kept them in the chariot cities and with the king at Jerusalem. The king made silver as common as stones in Jerusalem, and cedars as common as the sycamore trees that are in the lowland. The horses which Solomon had brought were out of Egypt. The king's merchants received them in droves, each drove at a price. A chariot was imported from Egypt for 600 shekels of silver, and a horse for 150 shekels. And so they exported them to all the kings of the Hittites and to the kings of Syria. 1 Kings chapter 11 Now King Solomon loved many foreign women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh. 
women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said to the children of Israel, You shall not go among them, neither shall they come among you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon joined to these in love. He had seven hundred wives, princesses, and three hundred concubines. His wives turned his heart away. When Solomon was old, his wives turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as the heart of David his father was. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. Solomon did that which was evil in the Lord's sight, and didn't go fully after the Lord, as David his father did. Then Solomon built a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, on the mountain that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. So he did for all his foreign wives, who burned incense and sacrificed to their gods. The Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods. But he didn't keep that which the Lord commanded. Therefore the Lord said to Solomon, Because this is done by you, and you have not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded you, I will surely tear the kingdom from you, and will give it to your servant. Nevertheless, I will not do it in your days, for David your father's sake, but I will tear it out of your son's hand. However, I will not tear away all the kingdom, but I will give one tribe to your son for David my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. The Lord raised up an adversary to Solomon, Hadad the Edomite. He was one of the king's offspring in Edom. For when David was in Edom, and Joab the captain of the army had gone up to bury the slain, and had struck every male in Edom, for Joab and all Israel remained there six months, until he had cut off every male in Edom, Hadad fled, he and certain Edomites of his father's servants with him, to go into Egypt, when Hadad was still a little child. They arose out of Midian and came to Paran, and they took men with them out of Paran, and they came to Egypt, to Pharaoh king of Egypt, who gave him a house, and appointed him food, and gave him land. Hadad found a great favor in the sight of Pharaoh, so that he gave him as wife the sister of his own wife, the sister of Topanes, the queen. The sister of Topanes bore him Ganubath, his son, whom Topanes weaned in Pharaoh's house, and Ganubath was in Pharaoh's house among the sons of Pharaoh. When Hadad heard in Egypt that David slept with his fathers, and that Joab, the captain of the army, was dead, Hadad said to Pharaoh, Let me depart, that I may go to my own country. Then Pharaoh said to him, But what have you lacked with me, that, behold, you seek to go to your own country? He answered, Nothing. However, only let me depart. God raised up an adversary to him, Rezan the son of Eliada, who had fled from his lord Hadadezer, king of Zobah. He gathered men to himself and became captain over a troop when David killed them in Zobah. They went to Damascus and lived there and reigned in Damascus. He was an adversary to Israel all the days of Solomon, in addition to the mischief of Hadad. He abhorred Israel and reigned over Syria. Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, an Ephraimite of Zeredath, a servant of Solomon, whose mother's name was Zeruah, a widow, also lifted up his hand against the king. This was the reason why he lifted up his hand against the king. Solomon built Millo and repaired the breach of his father David's city. The man Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor, and Solomon saw the young man that he was industrious, and he put him in charge of all the labor of the house of Joseph. At that time, when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem, the prophet Ahijah the Shilonite found him on the way. Now Ahijah had clad himself with a new garment, and the two of them were alone in the field. Ahijah took the new garment that was on him and tore it in twelve pieces. He said to Jeroboam, Take ten pieces, for the Lord, the God of Israel, says, Behold, I will tear the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon and will give ten tribes to you. But he shall have one tribe, for my servant David's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, because they have forsaken me, and have worshipped Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, 
Chemish the god of Moab, and Milcom the god of the children of Ammon. They have not walked in my ways, to do that which is right in my eyes, and to keep my statutes and my ordinances, as David his father did. However, I will not take the whole kingdom out of his hand, but I will make him prince all the days of his life for David my servant's sake, whom I chose, who kept my commandments and my statutes. But I will take the kingdom out of his son's hand, and will give it to you, even ten tribes. I will give one tribe to his son, that David my servant may have a lamp always before me in Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen for myself to put my name there. I will take you, and you shall reign according to all that your soul desires, and shall be king over Israel. It shall be, if you will listen to all that I command you, and will walk in my ways, and do that which is right in my eyes, to keep my statutes and my commandments, as David my servant did, that I will be with you, and will build you a sure house, as I built for David, and will give Israel to you. I will afflict the offspring of David for this, but not forever. Therefore Solomon sought to kill Jeroboam. But Jeroboam arose and fled into Egypt, to Shishak, king of Egypt, who was in Egypt until the death of Solomon. Now the rest of the Acts of Solomon, and all that he did, and his wisdom, aren't they written in the book of the Acts of Solomon? The time that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel was forty years. Solomon slept with his fathers, and was buried in his father David's city, and Rehoboam his son reigned in his place.